It's music to your ears with lovely new singing star Kathy Lee Johnson. And the prizes are surprising. A chance to win a car and big money. $100,000 at stake. There's a home viewer phone call. It's all new. It's the tops in tuneful suspense. Tom Kennedy and the $100,000 Name That Tune, Friday night at 7.30 here on Channel 4. Watch News Center 4, 120 minutes. And every second counts. Visit the American Museum of Natural History. Hi, I'm Frank Field. The term step-parent does not have a pleasant ring to it. Do you remember how Cinderella and Snow White suffered because of their wicked stepmothers? And I'm Lynn Redgrave, and we know that more and more today, uh, parents are both step-parents as well as natural parents, and that the step-family is uh, a special problem, and sometimes in need of shoring up as well. So today, saving the step-family, and in, with one in four of our children living in situations like this, this is a concern not for women only. And we have a, a couple here with us today, and I would like to ask them, get some first-hand information from them, and find out what it is that can be done for people who are faced with this. Uh, and I think, Jeanette, you said you were left there. Where do you go for help? And I think that's important. So why don't we ask Mr. and Mrs. Wolvek, what was the major problem in your instance? Well, when we first were going together, Adam, our, my stepson, Rosalie's son, who's a three-year-old, was a very nice little boy to be with until we got married and we found problems developing uh, that were not there before. There was a lot of animosity between us. There was a lot of tension that developed where he would actually try and separate us. Yeah. He became a threat to me. Oh, yeah. He was jealous. He was jealous. Yes. That's right. That's well, why could you not solve that problem? I understood the problem, but it didn't, uh, didn't affect my emotions because I felt anger towards him. He became a threat to me as much as I was a threat to him. I see it now, but it wasn't easy to solve emotionally. And we also had different methods of handling discipline, which was a big problem at that time. Totally divergent methods that we couldn't agree upon. And it was starting to tear us a little bit apart. And we had read Jeanette's book, and we called the foundation, and that's how we decided the problem was getting a little bit out of hand, too much for us to handle. And we felt that it would be wise at that time to get professional help and to what help What sort us. of counseling did they, did they give you, or what, what sort of advice did they give you? How to deal with Adam, how to make him my friend instead of making him my enemy. Was, what else did you find as a major problem in, in this marriage? Our marriage itself, I think. Could I uh, ask an additional question? Yes, yes please. please. You jump right uh, in. Did you find uh, your Adam was a kind of lightning rod to attract some of the latent differences that might have existed between the two of you that weren't out in the open? No, I think no, it's a much bigger problem. No, I not Not at all, no. I think we had an ideal marriage. We except for Adam. We still do, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> except for Adam um, creating potential problems or the emotional. What he did at the time was that he had so much pent up anxiety and anger in him that it manifested itself in very wild behavior. He was disruptive. He wouldn't listen to any discipline that we tried to propose at, 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 a t at that time. And he was just very disobedient. And I want to say something. Where and how the uh, threads of conflict had gestated in this and resulted in this kid's expressing himself in this fashion, in the self-destructive uh, You've got to jack for a minute. Yeah. Yes. What we did, however, was we took a rather different approach, quite frankly, and we met alone, just the two of us, with Jeanette and with um, 
Jane Parsons, who's a social worker who we've worked with. And we felt that at, we had to work out our own problems and what we were feeling at the time. We had so many different feelings and emotions about the situation that, in fact, I don't think up to now we've even brought Adam into the room with us. Um, we just handled it on our own. And we've come to the point now in our, in our counseling where we've almost, uh, we, we have overcome all the problems we've had with Adam. We don't even talk about him anymore as a problem. Jeanette will uh, attest to that. Right. We, we have other problems also revolving around the step family situation, but not really about Adam. He's, he's become a changed it, child. It, it seems from, from, from what you're saying that while earlier we were talking about Adam as if he were the, the baddie in this situation and the only one, you solved it perhaps by feeling that your own feelings were too towards his well, like Let me just, I just have to bring out a yeah. very important point. In this case, the solution so far is, is working. The problem is being solved nicely with, let's say, help from an outside source, in this case, you. It's not to say that Mr. Sherman's approach would not have oh, succeeded. No, no. And yeah, it's not to say, too, that no, no. possibly a family has faced this problem without going to an outside oh, source. Oh, they oh. do it on their own. Yeah. So there is we, a happy solution. We have a solution. different philosophy because in the Step Family Foundation, we, we feel that the Step Family is so complicated that sometimes it's the couple that we kind of want to see first and what's going on with them vis-a-vis -vis the children. And we don't bring everybody in because it gets confusing. That's been our experience through trial and error. And what, what went on what with the Volvex is, is uh, I think they could explain to you kind of what happened with Adam. Adam needed some simple structure. Uh, is to where he belonged in the family and the child in the family, the stepchild and bio child, wants to know where he is. So what we, we, the bottom line of counseling was something like, well, what happens when Adam goes to bed? It was really, and then the Volvex was like, we, we set up it that he was read a story. He calmed down. He slept the night. The next week they came in and Adam was the, what was that before? So this is what, <laughs> what was okay. happening and before? What happened before? Uh, well, let them tell you. I mean, you know. And <laughs> would wake up. Just, oh. What were you doing before? Sorry. I wanted just to ask, uh, uh, make a statement that there are many ways of mm. approaching oh, sure. right. a sure. problem. Now, it, well, now, I must also say we're is, not solving all no, the problems. Right. What we want the to do thing is, is what one has in mind. Now, <laughs> what I, I just want to explain that what I have in mind, and what I, my agency would have in mind, is that Adam is not simply a tabula rise, not simply an object on which is inscribed the parental or the marital conflict or, or confusion or whatever. He has his own existential identity, need problem and he's got to be heard see we would feel he's got to be heard there's a piece of him that is and yes a reflection of whatever's happening there but also okay, a piece of his own we, uh, self we, that's we can in the spend biological the rest of family the time better. <laughs> spend the rest of the time let's look work, you know, we, we, we know there's the a problem families. we wanted to establish yeah. there's a problem yeah. and, and it, it comes with children it's yeah. solved now what very quickly were some of the other difficulties and we would like to learn what happens when this kind of an arrangement occurred. A great the deal of the problem was uh, discipline. I believed he was overindulged. Right, that's by his with mother. the youngster. What are some of the other and problems that you going face to sleep in this at night? He would not still go to exist. Sleep. Still exist? Very few, other than any, any other normal child. Did you suffer from an authority? He wouldn't accept your authority. That's right. He would and always run to his mother. I don't right, have let, to let's get to away you. from Adam. Uh, he's in school now, and he's happy, and he's doing well. No, no, without. Without knowing yes. what the merits are, and I also pay child support as well. You, so you have an extended family, 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 and you well, I have two children. So you have two children. So yeah. that's we've what got I mean. three families. We've got to take the absent, the absent father into three family. Family. It's, it's a very frustrating family. feeling. It really is. Yes. Yes. Then, Mr. Yes. Warwick, you're an absent father to your children who yes, live with your ex-wife. Right. And then you have the problem of do you pay your monies into this family or your monies into the other? I have two families. I support. Yeah, that's not so easy. That is not easy. And where do you? Where, where, as a man, do you, where, where, where do you do? Everybody's calling on you. That's Everybody's right. saying, you know, give me, give me, give me, and show me that you love me. This is one of And it's very tough, and, and, and you know, you've oh got my. biological, it's really... Well, uh, we're, we're not going to solve all the problems, but we just want to, we've scratched the surface. <laughs> oh, we want to emphasize that it is, that it, we want people to think about it. it